Thank you very much, Professor Noda. Thank you for kind introduction. Perhaps I think you are right. Many people surrounding me used to think I was a totally crazy person. Here, this is the agenda of my lecture today. 13 or 12 years ago, I left Kyoto University. My name is Matsunami, but uh, in the position of the Professor Emeritus. But in a way, ICT innovation is the name titled for 20th century. That's the societal change to the information society and the semiconductor was critically important. And previous speaker already covered lots of my topic. That means effective utilization of electric energy. So I can be short for this. But in order to do that, currently, silicon is the majority to cover that area. But from the energy saving point of view, silicon carbide power semiconductor is very much useful. And Kyoto University, I proudly say, have made a lot of contribution. But those activities in the past was regarded as crazy approach. And I would like to give you the status quo of the silicon carbide power device and in order to realize the green innovation and the future will be explained in my own way. So as you know very well, this is the first number one computer in 1946. Vacuum tubes are used. This is 30 meter in length. It started to operate and 10 years later, this was outdated. What was the reason for discontinuation? Now, semiconductor had emerged in the world. I will touch upon later, but if we use the semiconductor, then electric energy or signals can be converted in multiple ways, especially between light, PV cells, use the light and get the generation of heat. And the other way around is the LD or laser. Then we have other energy or the signals. We can have the interactive conversion, but I will not touch upon this today. In 1947, but published in 1948, transistor was made by Gelmanim. That was the report from the Bell Lab. And then little by little, silicon increased in its use. Integrated circuit was not so much outstanding. Silicon is just partially used. However, we used to use electric circuit, but it's now the integrated circuit that the new concept and in 1970s now program was added on that means the combination with the software has been leading to the computer of today that's a whole flow of the technology that is the paradigm shift of a society by progress of electronics paradigm shift did take place please allow me to say so so compared with the first computation machine, we had this road, desktop PC, tablet today, and especially Japan has been good at making digitalized camera and a mobile phone. All those are combined now. That's crystallization has been displayed with the smartphone group. This type of machines were developed but the contents are not equal. However, 
fusion of information technology and communication is the symbol, so cloud system can be utilized, therefore, even with small sites that can do the same work, which was done by the large device. So cloud system is the popular word today. But using smartphone, recently I see young people embedded in enjoying games only. In cultural aspects, I have a concern. And a brain scientist said that if people just involved in the smartphone playing the games and then frontal lobe development of the intelligence will not be developed any further. So therefore, this is the new social issues. Kyoto Prize has the good teaching. Science and technology can give us lots of convenience. However, on the other hand, new issues will be given to us to face in order to keep the civilization level. And now electric and light signal change was started. So the light emitting diode and the laser was further developed in 1954. Bell Laboratory, for the very first time, made the power as a power source for the phone, that is the PV cells, as Professor Artwork said in previous talk. In 1995, gallium nitride is used. So now most of the lighting is using this. Therefore, in the semiconductor world, photonics progress is triggering the paradigm shift. Even today, for the fluorescence lights production in Japan, in two years to come, those will be discontinued. So LED will be the representative names up for lighting. Now let me move on to the second agenda, that's the effective utilization of the electric energy. Dr. Artwater mentioned the importance of energy. Therefore, I do not need to touch upon this. Energy is very important. And for conversion, that is the major role for the power electronics. But in many cases, this is not visible from outside. Or the diode or PV cells can be visible. But the power electronics are embedded in devices. So we are bolstering from behind. Therefore, from the outer side, it's totally invisible. And the silicon semiconductor is the major role to be played. But recently, silicon carbide, that material of semiconductor, has been emerging, emerging, but very, very rapidly. I myself was involved in the research, and I would like to give you the road that our research teams had taken and commercialization will be mentioned for the purpose of the benefits of the other people. Silicon carbide should be further progressed. What is the evolution that we are making? And especially LED is very popular, but that nitride system could be used for the power. So that potential will be touched upon. Well, this is the common sense for scientists. This is the power electronics. How is how to convert the direct current and alternate current. As you know, for DC, photovoltaic cells, or what we call battery, has this DC. Along with the time, the same potential. Of course, the lifetime is there, so therefore lifetime is limited number, and then gradually voltage declines. But this is the AC. That means that if we just plug into the concert on the wall, then we can get the electricity. That's the alternate current. And the power electronics is the inverter from DC to AC for conversion, and we have converter from AC to DC. So these two inverter converters are well mixed or combined. In order to produce the inverter and the converter, very important 
element is a diode. That means the only one way of current running is facilitated. Rectifying is the feature, and switching is required. Two types of transistor are available. One is the bipolar transistor, NPN, PNP. That means the impurity things are infused to change the structural material. And MOSFET is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. transistor. That is the principle of the capacitor to convey the electric signal. And I will touch upon this later. One case example of the inverter circuits are shown here. This is the plug, and then get the AC that will be converted to DC. And that DC electricity has the inverter here. This is the diode or transistor placed. And we need L or C, but anyway, those are skipped. And then that is running the motor. Conventionally, motor directly attached to the power source. And then motor was rotated. But in recent days, most of the motors are controlled by inverters. For example, if you use the home electric appliances, inverter, refrigerator, inverter, air conditioner, inverter, washing machine, all those are using the inverter. Now, what is the expectation for energy saving and the specific expectation given to power semiconductors, silicon nitride? Well, up until the consumer on the transmission line of electricity, there are lots of conversion DC to AC or AC to DC or increase of voltage. Those are the steps up until the use. Five to ten percent are lost. And as I said, especially for the consumer home electric machines and industrial motors, those are using the inverter. And we use silicon in majority of the cases. And then ten percent of the energy produced are lost. So if two kilometers of the air condition is running, then the 10 percent are being lost on the consumer side. So, for example, the nuclear reactor had a 10,000 kilowatt, and then uh, if we use the uh, 1 million, and then 150,000 kilowatts are lost, huge 15 percent of the energy loss. So if we can do something better, then we can contribute to the green society or carbon-free society. Electricity is so convenient, so everybody thinks they can get for free and just plug into the uh, electricity content. But we should have the renovation or innovative change for the power electronics in order to save energy that was generated. This is the expectation for territory for silicon carbide power devices, but uh, first silicon power. So this is the hertz or frequency on x-axis, and y-axis is the capacity of the power. In history, bipolar transistor was the first one in power electronics in 1970s. But sorry to use the technical word, but bipolar type has a lot of the electricity power. However, it cannot respond to the high speed. Therefore, to higher electricity capacity, for example, the DC transmission large factories are the major users. In contrast, in information process, most transistors have been used. This is for memory and computer. It made a great development. And planar structure is the feature. So the electricity is flowed on the horizontal direction. But because of the property characteristics, it's speedy, however, it cannot be used for high VA. 
and smart people thought up with a good idea. So this combination of the both would be realized. And those are the IGBT, which are used in today's converters, inverters. Insulated gate bipolar transistor is the abbreviation. That means the structure is the MOS. However, bipolar is used to get the high electricity currency. So currently we are standing at this stage. So as a material, silicon carbide is coming up. You may ask, what is it? Silicon carbide is in Japanese, tanka keso, and a silicon had played a major role for the any kinds of semiconductor device, logic, so memory, PV cells. But the diamond is the hardest material in the world. So one-to-one -one ratio for the mixture, that's the silicon carbide, silicon wafer. This is the uh, diamond original stone, and then silicon carbide wafer is fabricated in one-to-one -one ratio. And the reason why there's a high expectation for this material is that here you see the property of the device, of the material of the silicon, comparing silicon and silicon carbide. And the, as Professor Atwater mentioned, talking about the energy gap, how much photon can be exchanged and there's a difference by three times between the two materials. Mobility is pretty much the same. This mobility is how much the electron moves. And the greatest feature is for the difference of this uh, gap by three times. And this is supported by the breakdown field. This is different by two digits. This is the key point. And also, this is a power device, and uh, so the heat will be generated when the power flows. And so thermal conductivity would be very important to release the heat. And for the, this is for the, about the same as the conductivity of the metal, the copper. And if we combine the different properties, then for the general purpose inverters, the efficiency can be improved as well as the output and also the it could be downsized and also uh, this uh, material can be used in high temperature. So there's only a need for simple cooling system with a small heat sink for air, or air cooling. So this is what is so interesting about this material. And MOSFET using the silicon carbide, if MOSFET can be developed, then this up, this using this uh, silicon carbide, we can develop an IGBT. But for the higher power capacity, the silicon carbide bipolar device will be needed. So instead of using so many players, we only de need these two for the power device. So. This is the dream that I would like to share from now. So for the first half, I focused on how difficult it was for to cover this side. And also I shared what is the uh, current status of this material. This is what I would like to explain. Now, I would like to share the story of a crazy guy. And we started this in Kyoto University. I want to share with you what is the turning point that we experienced and what was so epoch-making of our activity to come up with the power device that we have today. So I'd like to reflect the history. As I said, in 1948, transistor was invented. Unfortunately, it could not be used uh, at a temperature above 60 degrees, the transistor will not operate. And at this point, silicon was not available yet. So in the U.S., there was a need for the high temperature. And there was a strong interest for being able to operate at high temperature. And there's a lady from Germany, silicon carbide will not 
melt. And at high temperature, there would be vapor created, which will create a high quality crystal. So at this point, again, I would like to say the silicon was not available yet. And in the U.S., there was a mega project that was、uh, developed, and also the Netherlands and Japan also participated in the first international conference, as well as、uh, second and the third were conference were held. And so, for the first conf- conference, we talk as、uh, Professor Award. Water mentioned Shockley participated in the first conference, and in this、uh, report for the conference, Shockley said that、uh, we need to be able to control this technology, and that would give us much promise for the future. However, this should take time, is what he said. And so, Lily method created high quality crystal, but as you see in the right side photograph, the crystal. Is irregular and only thin film can be developed. So, which means that we could not create a device by this method. So, the Li method was not enough for device. And also, transistor was made available from the latter half of the、uh, 70s and for IC. And also, operating temperature、uh, could be elevated to 125 degrees. So, There was a big progress from 60 degrees to 125 degrees. And so there was much focus or interest in silicon, and silicon carbide was now forgotten. And it's as long as 45 years ago that I was interested in this material. And up to that point, so I was trying to elucidate the physics, physical property of the material. but... This was really an、uh, indirect attempt, which was quite frustrating, so I felt the limit to this effort. And also, in this silicon carbide had such a good property, but it was not fully used in the semiconductor. So, with my naivety as a youth, I was very much motivated of wanting to create an electronic device using silicon carbide. And so, Well, we needed to. So, for the high, there needs to be exchange between high energy and low energy. So, I wanted to do a research on luminescence, and I had strong interest in the blue LED. And also, so, I had this、uh, curiosity for this、uh, property for this、uh, silicon carbide and also、uh, for the LED. I tried to combine the two, but now many people quitted to research on the SIC. So it took about a decade to come up、uh, with a certain achievement. I introduced a buffer layer for gallium and gallium nitride,、uh, could be developed in a different、uh, material substrate. So... And it was about 1980 that we succeeded. And so we were able to use the handmade reactor to develop a reproducibility on a silicon substrate. Silicon carbide was、uh, grown. So we succeeded in that. And so then we went on to develop the MOSFET. This is using the silicon substrate and silicon carbide N type. And on top of that, Uh, with the P type silicon carbide and with the PN junction is here. But the issue is the silicon and silicon carbide between the two, there's about 20% of lattice mismatch of the atom. So this means that one side will be pulled, and so this mismatch. Was seen between the P and the N. And so for the MOSFET, this part has to be flat, but in just a few volts, there is this leakage of the current. So I felt the limit to this、uh, material. So I needed to address this lattice mismatch issue. And actually, 16 years later, Harjo University and Bell 
and a four inch wafer. They have uh, come up with us uh, three CSIC on four inch silicone. And so on the silicone carbide substrate, I have, uh, well, the substrate, the, we had no substrate available in the market at that point. And so is uh, a, for the abrasive or for the fire brick, there was an uh, industrial uh, material, adjacent crystal. So there's a single crystal shown here. And uh, this part was cut off by hammer and the reverse side was polished and silicon carbide was to be developed or grown on this uh, surface. It's not the silicon, so we could elevate the temperature. So in a, uh, we had a reactor that we made that we used for this uh, research. And so you see the natural surface here and we put an angle here and attach it to the surface where it's polished. Then if we observe the surface morphology, it becomes very smooth and shiny. And so we always find this mosaic pattern on the surface. So Edison crystal, which was an industrial material, the white is silicone and the black is carbon. And there is this repetition forming a zigzag pattern and it goes back every six times. Compared to that, in case of silicone or gallium arsenal, there's only a single direction. So if we put it on the off the uh, substrate and on the substrate, we did a comparison and just observing the surface or looking at the R heat, we can see that the stacking sequence is repeated on the uh, off substrate, but for the on the on substrate side, there will be a symmetry created. So we developed a model for this concept and for the on uh, axis, the terrace is very wide. So when the terrace is large, then silicon, when the silicon molecule comes, and if the terrace is big, then there is a choice, uh, pulling the zig or the zag, and they will grow horizontally and collide. Then it would create a mosaic pattern that we saw a while ago. And in case of off axis, uh, the structure will be a uh, step structure. And so the terrace is small. So for the horizontal side and the vertical side, uh, there will be the uh, chemical link or binding. So there will be a replication so, and this is actually well known in the crystal growth field, but uh, we are in the device field. So, well, I thought that uh, we could convince, be convincing with this uh, concept, but this was, uh, and so we created a diode. And so the PN junction, so I said that the reverse uh, flow would be created in a single volt, but here we reached 100 volts, and the crystal was very smooth. This is the model, uh, schematic of the model on the middle, and on the right side, so this is the angle, what is the angle for the, and we call this a breakthrough, but if we think of the early history, then it took uh, a little over 20 years, but we entered a completely new, different phase. And this is, I think, was the turning point of uh, the higher interest to silicon carbide. So there are many devices made globally, but for the crystal, uh, this off-angle technology is widely being used. And in 1993, so there was this very high-quality crystal and shock diode, shot key diode was made, and this was uh, 
announced in 1995. And what I want to say that, so in forward, well, in case of silicon, the flow is、uh, generated from 200 volts. And 1.75 kilovolt, it has this withholding of voltage. But so there is a、uh, difference uh, of uh, one uh, digit in the breakdown field. And so this side、uh, would create, generate heat. So it would be a heater rather than the power device. So Power device members comparing with the silicon said this is so much different with the silicon. And so this was a quite an interesting aspect. So, well, unfortunately,、um, but or not, Infineon has commercialized it in 2001. For me, I would be happy if this、uh, technology is anywhere. But, and that was epoch making one. And so I was able to demonstrate the technology in a device. And next for the MOSFET, so the, there's a breakdown voltage on the horizontal axis and specific on resistance on the vertical side, which shows the loss. And so with increased voltage, a unipolar device has high resistance. That's the limit for the silicon. In case of silicon carbide, as I said, Uh, there's uh, uh, about 2.5 times. And we have MOSFET. MOSFET well, ended up in a miserable result. And、uh, finally, we were able to exceed the limit of the silicon, but we could not make further progress. So, as a university, In the future, there's a trench type and there's a gate here. And if we could create a gate at this side, then in the limited space,、uh, we could align many power devices so the currency could be increased. So, since this is the way to go for the future, the university will. So, in a Different、uh, side, 90 degrees difference. We should look at the property on the planar. And so there was about 20 times, this was to be an improvement by 20 times of the performance. This is what we announced. And for the MOSFET today, trench MOS as well, Japan is now being able to mass produce the. Device and the, well, Japan is, has a strength in MOSFET due to this background, and that's why I call this second epoch making event. So the world has started to change. Now, in device, on top of the four inch wafer, device is being produced. Now, with a strong request, six inch, that's 150 millimeter diameter, is That is 150 millimeters, 6 inch, and 4 inch. Different from the silicon, it's not dissolved, so sublimation method is used. So the seed would be grown. That's the method for the silicon carbide. Therefore, crystallization properties are quite different from the silicon. This is the Schottky diode. In 1995 and 1993, data was available, and based on that, 2001, Infineon Company commercialized. Nine years later, in Japan, in Kyoto, Rome is the e component company. Echo Diode made an n n c e m e n t for the possibility of the mass production, and Rome started to send samples to all over the world. And also in December in this year, most transistor. We also announced the possibility, and they succeeded in the mass production delivery. As you can see, no leak at all in a strange manner. And at the silicon, 200 degrees, that is the. At the lower temperature, okay, but、um, 
degree, silicon is not working at all. However, silicon carbide has enough margin, even with the high temperature. Now, in order to have this material in the society, a lot of companies or industries should participate in producing the devices. And that was the government decision. And then the government made a lot of funding program. The first triggering research was that in our western part of Japan, several companies or producers had the project for the most updated power device. So all people got familiar with the power silicon carbide, and then nationwide level of the project has launched, and several manufacturers participated in. I think Japan was able to catch up with the level of the world. And then a smaller scale of the project followed six years ago. There was a request from the government to read the future, and then what we call first projects was launched in the then government. Thirty research teams received in total 270 billion yen of the budget, so the big initiative was launched from the then government of Japan. And our field was one of it. And 525 teams made an application. Out of that, only 30 won that subsidies. We were one of them, and we are proud that we have generated a good data. After that, since last year, SIP program is running since last year. Now, what are the applications? I would like to share with you. This is the reduction of the power loss. Now, first, that was mounted on the Ginza subway. 38.6% of the reduction of the power loss was realized for one train of the subway in Tokyo. That was the silicon switching, and the silicon carbide shotki diode was used. Now, Odakyu train, that's the train of this private train in the suburbs of Tokyo, then all silicon carbide inverter was mounted on the train, and the total train-wide power loss was reduced as much as 40%. Now, for the high-speed elevator, then the loss of the power was reduced by 65%, especially the volume of the elevator or the installation area was able to be reduced by as much as 40%. That announcement was made two years ago, and then that will be developed into the next generation of the elevators from Mitsubishi. Now, the photovoltaic power generation was the major theme of the previous lecture, but power conditioner required, now made of silicon today, but all the silicon carbide power conditioner is being developed. That has 97 0.3% or 98% of the output efficiency. Photovoltaic power conditioners are now possible, and gradually those are used in the actual product. And in Japan, hybrid automobiles, you know Prius, this Prius was the test car for the text course only. All silicon carbide inverter was mounted, and then fuel efficiency increased by 5% all of a sudden. I talked with those people, 5%, and are you so happy with only 5%? Because in silicon development, just 0.5% incremental increase is the total amazing surprise. But 5%, that's the one-digit difference. So all Toyota people or vehicle people got amazed to see the silicon carbide. So that was the figure in the test course. Therefore, in January this year, in public road, Camry was used on the public road test. And in Toyota City, fuel cell buses are running in the streets. And then Shotki diode are used for the Toyota, or those are being discussed seriously. And last month, on the 25th, surprising announcement was made. That's the JR Tokai, or JR Tokai has the bullet train. For bullet train, 
experimental train are running in order to mount a silicon carbide device. What is necessary for transformers or converter, inverter, power conditioner or motors, all those are changed. Then with the driving system alone, 10 tonnage of weight was reduced. So if this will be verified and then this is the essential element to be used because if the train is getting lighter, then higher speed is possible. I touched upon the home electric appliance at first. If that is the one kilowatt of the consumption, the 100 kilowatt is just a waste. Again, for this, if that is the two kilowatt, just a 200 watt is just thrown away. So if we can have that conversion loss, and then just in the field of the home electric appliances, as much as 18 billion kilowatts could be saved. So if we can replace the silicon with the silicon carbide power module, then that will be enormous energy saving. However, silicon is dominant and cost is the issue. So user should make a decision whether the efficiency or the price or cheap price. So wafer is getting larger for silicon instead of the sublimation that is the melt silicon and then seed crystals is given and then rotated and pulled up. That is the Chokularski method to make this large size. Recently, the largest one is 450 millimeter. I don't know who will make device, but the 300 millimeter has been used quite popularly. And now IGBT took 30 years in its evolution. And in those years, we had the generation changes and the size was reduced in almost a way. So on the silicon side, the progress was made, perhaps because of the silicon carbide push. Now nitride side, Gallium nitride property is quite closer to silicon carbide, but the velocity is higher than silicon carbide. So with the high range of the frequency, it can be used. So for general purpose, inverter gallium nitride can have the same performance. However, now high frequency is the target. But the... We don't have the substrate available yet, and so we're just using silicone and hydroepitaxy has to be used. Then there is again 50% mismatch, but it says transition layer. By using this layer, we have a gallium nitride and alum, aluminum gallium nitride with this structure. Well, the atom can move in this direction. We can make it available in the structure, so which means that we can use it in high frequency. And in Japan for the first time, it was Yaskawa Electric that using gallium nitride, they came up with a power controller, and this power controller are all for domestic PV use. And so I don't know if this is actually made by gallium nitride, but so if we want to operate on electronic uh, equipment, we need a power source, power switch, and power supply. And if we move it 100 megahertz, uh, we can miniaturize the size. And this is what the American Venture Company is saying. And if I don't know if the gallium nitride is being used or not. But with gallium nitride, yes, it can be used at 100 megahertz. Now, talking about the future, silicon has history of 30 years as a power device. So for the voltage and the current, uh, it occupies a large portion, but the silicon carbide is uh, now uh, being promoted to be used for above 600 volts. But for gallium nitride, if we fit it in this uh, diagram, this is the territory, this is the area that gallium nitride will occupy. So for, if we have the vertical type uh, equipment, then it may be a different uh, story. Now, moving on to green innovation, I want to share the achievement of the first project. So this is looking at the power device for silicon and silicon carbide uh, against the voltage rating. Currently, silicon so uh, the, uh, more, uh, 
diode can only be uh, used at this uh, region. And if uh, you uh, spend a lot of money, you can go up to more than one volt. But uh, then you have the for the silicon carbide, short key barrier diode uh, can cover the uh, pin diode for silicon in terms of the cost as well for MOSFET and JFET. As I said, will most likely uh, replace the IGBT. It's just an issue of price, but. The challenge now is to use the silicon carbide for higher voltage, and so we have applied for the first uh, program. And if for the ultra high voltage application, we can cover the power transmission and also the DC power transmission and advanced traction. And uh, uh, the bullet train is uh, using 25,000 voltage, so we need a high voltage for the device traction. And so in Japan, the power is transmitted at 6,600 volts. And so now in DC, so the target would be to create a device at the 13 kilovolts. And if this is achieved, then with the, we need a 4 GTO for silicon. But in case of silicon carbide, we can replace it with only one unit. So. And if there are four units, then there is high uh, possibility of a breakdown. So from 2009 to 2013, our project was adopted in first. And so our uh, target was to come up with a fast and thick silicon carbide epitaxy and defect reduction. So Dr. Kimoto of Kyoto University and uh, Dr. Okumoto uh, of the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology and others have participated. And uh, for the P diode, 40 ampere for 5.2 volts, and for Kyoto University has uh, done a research on its own. And uh, we have record did 26.9 kilovolts with standard voltage. And this is for right, a device right before IGBT. And we have uh, exceeded 23 kilovolts. So this was a surprise and encouraging that we could uh, make this achievement in the university. And also IGBT that the IST uh, has worked on, 30 ampere. They have achieved the target and we need to benchmark ourselves globally. This is the global benchmark. The red shows, well, there's only one company, company called Cree in the U.S. Uh, that has uh, made this high achievement. And in Japan, we are only inferior in two aspects. And for IGBT performance, uh, the U.S. has achieved 22 kilovolts, and in Japan, it's only 16 kilovolts. So for in terms of crystal growth and the defect reduction and uh, physical control, uh, we uh, have made, Japan has made a high achievement and also a high level of creating a device of high withstanding voltage. And, but, but within the SIP program, we have to find a way to commercialize it. And so this is a request that we are uh, making to the uh, industrial circles. Now, so, I talked about the silicon carbide, uh, the expectation we have, and also my experience as a crazy guy of doing research in Kyoto University, and we have reached thus far. And for commercialization, well, we needed support from the national government. This is what I truly felt, and also in the uh, cutting edge technology development. Well, we can be proud of our achievement that uh, we bench have uh, reached a high level. And for the SIC power device, for the unipolar device has reached a commercial level. And uh, so we are seeing uh, the reduction of the power loss in actual application. And discrete device is what we call in Japan. It's just for MOS FET for switching. And silicon carbide SPD is uh, now available. So there are wide application, uh, many uh, 
tests are being conducted, especially in Europe. There's a high demand for use in the railway, but the, there's in Europe. For Dio, there's a supplier, but there's no uh, one company that can cover both areas. So, and for bipolar device, is bipolar device is still at the R&D stage. And in order to commercialize it, uh, we need to implement it or integrate it into the various uh, uh, equipments. And so for, uh, there's an importance for the power electronic supply service as well. Now, talking about the, our challenges uh, about the future, this is the venture company in Kyoto. And this is a dream that we have of using the silicon carbide that only can be achieved by this material. And the vacuum tube switching uh, is to be replaced by the MOSFET using silicon carbide. And this can be applied as the neutron source of the accelerator for the X-ray system for medical use and or the particle beam treatment for the uh, medical use. If we can use this material for this application, then... LINAC uh, will require 1.6 kilometers as a distance, but using this technology, uh, we, can, uh, we, we can just achieve this at only 6 meters just by uh, the calculation uh, ratio. This is uh, the achievement that we can expect. And also for JR Tokai, as already been announced, for Maglev, well, 12 years later, there will be a bullet train using the maglev. And uh, so this will be using the uh, magnetic force. And there will be require a large uh, electric power equipment. And there will be a need for mega substation in Yamanashi. Uh, there's an experimental line that requires uh, two substation. And if there's going to be a maglev between Tokyo and Nagoya, the, the distance will be 200 kilometers, four times distance, which means well, if we consider the power that is needed and the loss at the, the substation, well, well, my colleague has been working on the basic research uh, at the Japan Railway, and so uh, he was very motivated to use the SIC for this technology, and he's uh, sending me chairs for that to be realized. So, thank you very much. That's all from my side. And I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Kimoto for providing me a lot of information. Thank you very much.